In this video, we're going to talk about how to find all the points where a parametric curve may have a horizontal tangent line or a vertical tangent line. So let's say if you have some curve. And whenever you have a horizontal tangent line, you need to know that the slope is equal to zero. And whenever you have a vertical tangent line, the slope is undefined, which means if you have a fraction, there's a zero in the denominator of the fraction. So keep that in mind. So let's say if we have a parametric function where x is equal to 3t plus 5, and let's say that y is equal to t squared minus 14. So how can we find the location of any horizontal or vertical tangency? Well, let's find dy dx first. To do that, we need to find dx dt, which is the derivative of 3t plus 5, so that's 3 and dy dt. So the derivative of t squared minus 4t, that's going to be 2t minus 4. So dy over dx is equal to dy over dt divided by dx over dt. So that's 2t minus 4 over 3. Now notice that the denominator will never be 0 because there's no t variable in the bottom of the fraction. So therefore, there's not going to be any vertical tangent lines in this example. Now, the numerator can equal 0. So let's set 2t minus 4 equal to 0. If we take out a 2, we can see that when t is equal to 2, there's going to be a horizontal tangent line. Now, we need to find a point. That means we need to find the x and y value where the horizontal tangent line exists. So now that we have t, all we got to do is plug it into the original equations to get y and x. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 5, that's 11. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 minus 8 is negative 4. So we see that x is 11 and y is negative 4. So we have a horizontal tangent line at the point 11 comma negative 4. Now for the sake of practice, let's try another problem. So let's say this time that x is t squared minus 6t and y is t to the third minus 3t. So feel free to pause the video and identify the points where the curve may have any horizontal tangent lines or any vertical tangent lines. Now, just like we did before, let's find dx dt. So that's 2t minus 6. And dy dt is going to be 3t squared minus 3. So now let's write the expression for dy over dx. So just like before, it's dy over dt divided by dx over dt. So dy dt is that 3t squared minus 3. And here we have dx dt, which is 2t minus 6. Now, in this example, we need to factor. So in the numerator, we can take out the greatest common factor, which is 3. And we're going to be left with t squared minus 1. In the denominator, the GCF is 2. But we can factor this further. t squared minus 1, we can write it as t plus 1 times t minus 1. So looking at our expression for dy over dx, what are the t values that corresponds to a horizontal tangent line? And what are the t values for a vertical tangent line? So to find the horizontal tangent line, set the numerator equal to 0. So you can see that at t equals 1, we're going to have a horizontal tangent line, and at t equals negative 1. So let's write that here. So t is going to be 1 and negative 1. Now to find the vertical tangent line, set the denominator equal to 0. So at t equals 3, we're going to get a vertical tangent line. So we don't need this anymore. So now we need to find the points where these 
types of lines are located. So let's start with this one, t equals 1. So what is x when t is 1? So that's going to be 1 squared minus 6 times 1. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Now let's find the y value when t is 1. So it's 1 cubed minus 3 times 1. So that's 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So we have a horizontal tangent line at the point negative 5, negative 2. Now what about when t is negative 1? This is going to be negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, and negative 6 times negative 1 is plus 6, so we get 7. And then for y, it's going to be negative 1 to the third power, minus 3 times negative 1. So that's negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. So the second horizontal tangent line occurs at the point 7 comma 2. Now the last thing we need to do is find the location of the vertical tangent line, when t is 3. So this is going to be 3 squared minus 6 times 3. So that's 9 minus 18, which is negative 9. And then let's do the same thing here. 3 to the third is 27. 3 times 3 is 9. 27 minus 9 is 18. So at the point negative 9, comma 18, we're going to have a vertical tangent line. And so that's how you can identify the locations of a horizontal tangent line and a vertical tangent line in a parametric curve. Let's work on one more example, but this time with trigonometric functions. So let's say that x is 4 cosine theta and y is 3 sine theta plus 2. So go ahead and find any point where the parametric function may have a horizontal tangent line or a vertical tangent line. So let's start by finding dx e theta. The derivative of a cosine is negative sine. And for dy over d theta, the derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of 2 is 0. So now we can find dy over dx. So that's dy over d theta divided by dx over d theta. So dy d theta is 3 cosine theta. dx d theta is negative 4 sine theta. Now we can write this as negative 3 fourths cotangent, but it's best to leave it in this form. So to find the vertical tangent, set the denominator equal to 0. And to find a horizontal tangent, set the numerator equal to 0. So let's start with the numerator. So when is cosine theta equal to 0? Let's focus on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Cosine pi over 2 is 0, and cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0. So we have a horizontal tangent line when theta is equal to pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Now let's identify the location of the vertical tangents. So when is negative 4 sine theta equal to 0? Or when is sine theta equal to 0? Sine 0 is 0. And sine pi is 0. Now we really don't need to include 2 pi because 0 and 2 pi are the same. So it's going to give us the same in, um, x and y values if we use 0 and 2 pi. So let's ignore 2 pi. So now let's find the points that correspond to the horizontal tangent line. So let's start when theta is pi over 2. So this is going to be 4 cosine pi over 2. And we said that cosine pi over 2 is 0. So 4 times 0 is going to be 0. Now what about y? So 3 sine pi over 2 plus 2. Sine pi over 2 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3 plus 2, that's 5. So we have the point 0 comma 5. Now what about when x, I mean when cosine, is 3 pi over 2? Cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0. Now let's find y. So we're going to have 3 sine 3 pi over 2 plus, plus 2, I mean. Sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. 
times 3, that's negative 3 plus 2, so that's going to be negative 1. So we have the point 0, negative 1. So these are the locations of the horizontal tangent lines. Now let's determine the locations of the vertical tangent lines. So let's start when theta is 0. So we're going to have 4 cosine of 0. Cosine 0 is 1 times 4. This is equal to 4. And sine of 0 is 0. So 3 times 0 is 0 plus 2. So we get 2. So the first point is at 4 comma 2. Now to find the other vertical tangent. So when theta is pi, this is going to be 4 cosine pi. Cosine pi is negative 1, so this is negative 4. And sine pi is 0 times 3, so that's 0 plus 2. So this is not going to change. So we have another vertical tangent at negative 4, comma 2. So now you know how to identify the location of any horizontal or vertical tangents on a parametric function.